Okay, welcome back to Midnight Tutor. We have another problem, an indefinite integral, which again is going to tax your ability to be creative to try to find a way to solve the problem. This is the problem statement, the indefinite integral of dx, 1 over 1 plus sine x minus cosine x. And obviously, let's just ver verify that these things are not going to help, but a simple substitution like u equals sine x, right, du then is cosine x, dx. Well, we don't have any cosine or sine terms in the numerator, so that's not going to help us. Plus, we would end up with some weird thing in the denominator, 1 plus u minus dx. That, that isn't going to do anything for us at all. So, that simple substitution will not work. Anytime you're given trigonometric functions, remember there are a couple of identities that might be your get-out-of-jail-free card. The, the two that are most often used, one is equal to sine squared x plus cosine squared x, and then the other one is that sine 2x is 2 sine x cosine x, right? There's another identity for cosine 2x, cosine squared minus sine squared, which is maybe a little bit less often used. But these two, you'll see all the time. So we're going to be creative and see if we can change this problem to something that's solvable. Now, I can't split this up, and with trigonometric terms, there's no way to use partial fractions, plus I can't factor this anyway, so that's not even really an option. But I can't always multiply by 1, right? So I'm going to take this Let me erase here. I'm going to multiply by 1, which is going to take the form 1 minus sine x minus cosine x. Now, why did I choose that? Well, I've got a 1 plus something. And remember our good friend, a plus b times a minus b is a squared minus b squared. So it's an easy thing to compute, and it's going to give us some squared terms, which we might then be able to use to offset by, re by re rewriting the 1 using that identity. So then this becomes the integral of 1 minus sine x plus cosine x, right, the minuses over, here we get 1, 1 squared is 1 minus sine x minus cosine x squared. And now I can rewrite this, and I'm just going to rewrite the denominator part. So 1 minus sine squared x, then we have a minus, so minus 2 sine x cosine x plus cosine squared x. So now look what's happening here. We've gotten our sine squared terms and we've got our 2 sine x cosine x term, which is also an identity, remember. And if I take 1 now and say 1 is going to be sine squared x plus cosine squared x, then look what happens. Sine squared x minus sine squared x, these cancel. Cosine squared minus cosine squared, these cancel. And all we're left with then is the 2 sine x cosine x. Let me rewrite this. So what we're left with then is 1 minus sine x minus cosine x over 2 sine x cosine x. Because that's all that's left when everything else in the bottom canceled out. And now we can use our identity. Remember that a plus b over c is the same as a over c plus b over c. So we can split this up and we can say this is the integral of 1 over 2 sine x cosine x 
minus the integral of sine x over that whole thing, minus minus plus gives us a plus cosine x over that whole thing. So now, look what we can do. Well, this is the same as sine 2x, right? So we can say this is the integral of 1 over sine 2x minus the integral, and the sines here cancel. So we have 1 half, and then 1 over cosine x dx plus, and here the cosines cancel, 1 over sine x. And so now we can just use some more represent, re -re rewriting of these things using trigonometric identities. And this is the same as saying the integral of, well, this one we can actually integrate, right? If, if we let u equal 2x, du is 2. So this is the same as the saying of the integral of 1 over sine u, but we have a 2, so we'd have to put a 2 over here on the top to comp compensate. And then 1 over sine is cosecant, and we have a formula for integrating cosecant. The same thing is true for cosine. 1 over cosine is secant. We have a formula for that. And here we have a cosecant. So I'll let you figure it out from here on your own. But you can see the methodology using the trigonometric identities. Always look for ways where you can get squares of sine and cosine, because then you can maybe cancel them out or make the whole thing equal to a 1, and slowly reduce the problem into little pieces, each of which becomes tedious but yet solvable. Okay, I hope this helped. Keep at it.